Good morning, Kingsley community. Pastor Colleen Weirman here coming to you with another daily devotion for Wednesday morning, June 5th, 2024, using our dailybread.org. It's free. June. Do, 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 do. May, June. Let's try again. June 5th. And this one. Hold on, let me find it. Liked and Loved by God by Adam Holtz. And you're to read Jeremiah 1, 1 through 10. So back in the Old Testament, Old Testament prophet Jeremiah, who also uh, wrote Lamentations. And um, Lamentations is uh, the name for lamenting, sorrow, crying. So Jeremiah is known as the weeping prophet. And with good reason. So Jeremiah 1, verse 5, Before I formed you, God says through the prophet, in the womb I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. So Adam writes, it feels like likes, you know, that little thumbs up on Facebook have always been with us. But it turns out that this virtual symbol of affirmation has only been around since 2009. So the like <laughs> only been around since 2009. The like designer, Justin Rosenstein, said he wanted to help create a world in which people uplift each other rather than tear each other down. <clears throat> but Rosenstein came to lament how his invention might have enabled users unhealthy addiction to social media. <laughs> I think Rosenstein's creation of the like button on Facebook speaks to our hardwired need for affirmation and connection. We want to know that others know us, notice us, and yes, like us. Okay, all you people pleasers out there, listen up. The like is fairly new, but our hunger to know and be known is as old as God's creation of human beings. Still, the like button doesn't quite get the job done, does it? Thankfully, we serve a God whose love goes so much deeper than a digital nod or a digital thumbs up. In Jeremiah 1.5, we witness his profoundly purposeful connection with a prophet whom he called to himself. Before I formed you, speaking to Jeremiah and to us today, in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. God knew the prophet even before conception and designed him for the life of meaning and mission, verse 8 through 10. And God invites us, too, into a purposeful life as we come to know God the Creator, who, is, who so intimately knows, loves, and likes us. So, if you never get any likes on your Facebook page, that's okay, because God loves you. <clears throat> he likes you, and he loves you. And apparently, he knows us before we were born, and he has a purpose for us. So he's given us um, a spiritual gift, at least one, to be able to use to spread the good news and of Jesus Christ and to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth through acts of service and using your gifts for glory of God, not for your own recognition. So how does God, <clears throat> how does knowing God intimately affect how you relate to others? So if you know God and God knows you, does it matter if you don't have a reputation or does it matter if somebody's trashing your reputation? It might hurt you, but it doesn't devastate you where you're going to jump off a bridge, you know, because God is the only one we, we receive our identity from because he knows us intimately. So how can living with purpose bring peace? So <clears throat> you know you have a purpose if you have breath, you have a purpose. God created all human beings and um, has put a piece of eternity in each human being. And so we will live forever. Our souls will go on. And so what is the purpose of this 70, 80 short year lifespan on this earth? It is to know God, know his son Christ, spread the gospel, and use your gifts to show others who Jesus is and point them to Christ. Let's pray. Father, help us to rest in your love and calling on our lives, to know that you care for us intimately as you shape us for each of the days you've planned for us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we're continuing through our sermon series, um, The Reason for God, and the questions that we're looking at, we're looking at questions or statements that trouble people the most about Christianity. So this week we're going to look at, um, should we take the Bible literally? So that's what we're going to look at. 
because uh, a lot of people don't believe that the Bible is a historical document, also a love story of God, also a poetry book. So it's like a little library in itself. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. And um, that's a Sunday at 10 a.m. So I'll see you tomorrow. But remember that you have a purpose. You have a reason for being here. If you have a pulse, feel your pulse, feel your pulse. If you have a pulse, God has a reason for you being right where he's placed you. Even if you, you know, one of those people that could never leave you, the city you live in because you're just so connected, he has a reason for you to be here. Even if the city's changing and looks different than what you remember it, he is um, has gifted you with a purpose to use it during the time you're in right now. So even if he, you know, he knew the gift he's going to give you before the foundations of the earth, it tells us that the Holy Spirit has given us a gift. And um, it may have taken you this long to figure out what it is. Um, or maybe you've been using your gift and now your gift is changing. It's Maybe it's the same gift, but you're doing it a different way. You're using it a different way to reach people. Um, I think of preachers who are using technology that they've never used before uh, to do devotionals, podcasts, um, make sure there's uh, worship services online. So same message, same gift called to preaching and to be a pastor, and you're doing it in a different way. Same gift just in a different way. So pray to God to continue to show you your gift. And as I've always said to people, if you want to know what your gift is, ask one of your good friends. They'll tell you what you're really good at. And then go into the Bible, into the back of the Bible, and look at the concordance, which is like a concordance, which is like a dictionary, and look up what it is they say you're good at. Caring for people, hospitality, um, baking, cooking, whatever. That's all hospitality. Uh, teaching, preaching, prayer, faith. Some people have the gift of faith, and you go, well, I have faith in Christ, right? But they have the gift of faith, so that when you're weak, it, your faith is weak, they automatically know through the power of the Spirit and their gift of faith what to say to you. <laughs> I've met a couple people with the gift, the spiritual gift of faith, and it's pretty amazing. So have a good day. Put your plants in the rain so they can get wet, and I will see you tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.